Hey guys, welcome to Cyber Platter. This is a full course on Microsoft Sentinel. In this chapter, we will discuss UEBA, User and Entity Behavior Analytics. What is UEBA? How it can be used in Microsoft Sentinel? What are the benefits of UEBA and how to configure UEBA in Sentinel? If you have missed any previous chapters, you can find the links to them and the full playlist in the description box. So let's get started. First, let's learn what is UEBA, User and Entity Behavior Analytics, and how UEBA works in Microsoft Sentinel. UEBA in Microsoft Sentinel is a security feature. It detects suspicious activities by analyzing user and entity behaviors over time. Instead of relying solely on static rules or signatures, UEBA uses machine learning and anomaly detection to identify potential threats. Now let's see how actually UEBA works. First one is builds baselines that is learns the normal behavior of users, hosts, IP addresses and applications over time. Suppose say there is a user name called John. He is from the finance department and typically logs in from New York between 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. And he does that only on weekdays. So now Sentinel recognizes this as John's normal behavior and creates a pattern that is building baselines. It does this for all the users, hosts, IP addresses, domains and so on. Next, detecting anomalies. That is, it identifies deviations from this normal behavior using machine learning techniques. Suppose say now John suddenly logs in at 2 a.m. from Russia and then downloads a large number of sensitive files. This will be detected by UEBM. It can also detect deviations at a broader level. For example, John is a finance user, right? Suddenly, if he starts performing IT admin tasks, that will also be detected. So this deviates from usual activity, triggering an anomaly alert. Next, correlating events. That is, it connects unusual activities across multiple data sources for better threat detection. Say John attempts multiple failed logins and all of these logins are from a new location. And after successful login, his account creates new administrator accounts in Azure Active Directory or Entra ID. And a new device is enrolled under his credentials. So individually, these actions may not seem suspicious, but correlating them reveals a potential account takeover attack. Next is assessing sensitivity and impact. This evaluates the relative importance of an asset, its peer group and its blast radius. What is blast radius? Blast radius refers to the potential impact of a compromised asset in a security incident. So it helps security analysts understand how far an attack can spread, what other assets could be affected and how critical the compromised asset is within the organization. Let's see some of the key aspects of blast radius analysis. First one is asset sensitivity. It determines the criticality of an asset based on its function, access level and importance. Peer grouping identifies similar assets to assess abnormal behavior or common attack targets. Lateral movement analysis evaluates how an attacker could move from one asset to another. Potential impact assessment that is helps prioritize response actions based on how much damage a compromise could cause. Say for example, there are two users. Alice is an HR staff and Bob is a cloud administrator. Now Alice logs in from a different city than usual. And Bob logs in from an untrusted device and attempts to change firewall rules. Now what UEBA does, it prioritizes the risk. Bob's role has higher privileges. So the blast radius is larger if compromised. 
So Sentinel prioritizes Bob's alert as a higher risk than Alice's. This is how assessing sensitivity and impact works, works in UEBM. This is a picture from Microsoft documentation. It represents how UEBA process is in Microsoft Sentinel and how it gradually reduces the volume of raw events by applying intelligence and analytics. So first here is the ingestion that is all security related logs and events are ingested from various sources like endpoints, networks and cloud services. This stage collects all the raw uh, data without filtering. So it is 100% of raw events. Next, security's research-based filtering is elim eliminating irrelevant data and only 30% of raw events are left. That is only events that have potential security significance are retained. Then events are enhanced with additional context such as user behavior, geolocation, device attributes and historical patterns. This helps in identifying abnormal behavior. Then the security analytics build profiles for users, devices and entities. This establishes a baseline of normal behavior to detect uh, deviations. Then events are mapped to the MITRE ATT&CK framework to identify tactics, techniques and procedures that is TTPs. This helps in detecting sophisticated attacks by correlating multiple signals. And by this time only 10% of the raw events remain. And then the final step security alerts are triggered only on anomalies and confirmed threats that is less than 1% of raw events. This reduces false positives, ensuring security analysts focus on the most critical threats. Now let's try to understand why UEBA matters. First is that it reduces false positives. So traditional rules may flag all failed logins as threats, but UEBA understands context, like for example, a traveling employee. So Microsoft Sentinel provides security analysts with artifacts and insights to understand anomalous activities in context. Actions performed by a user, host or IP address are evaluated contextually where a true anomaly is identified based on a few key factors. First one, geographical locations, devices and environments that is detects suspicious logins from unexpected places, devices or environments. And then time and frequency that is it compares current actions to the user's past behavior, for example, logging in at unusual hours. Then there is peer behavior comparisons that is it identifies anomalies by comparing actions to others in the same department or role. And then organization wide behavior that is it detects deviations at a broader level like for example as we discussed a finance user suddenly performing IT admin tasks. Like you can see in this small picture, there is the context user, then peer, then organization. All of this will be compared. So it reduces false positives and then it detects advanced threats that is identifies insider threats, compromised accounts and lateral movement by attackers. And then it also enhances response prioritization that does help security teams focused on critical threats first and this reduces alert fatigue. So all in all UEBA goes beyond rule based detection by learning behaviors, detecting anomalies and correlating security events. So this explains the UEBA architecture in Microsoft Sentinel. So it is showing how data flows from customer sources that is for example SaaS applications and on-premises environments to Sentinel for analysis. So first the customer data sources SaaS applications for example say Microsoft 365 or third party cloud apps and then there is on-premise infrastructure as well like servers, network devices, security appliance. So from this raw data is ingested like for logs, events and alerts are ingested from this customer data to Microsoft Sentinel. 
and then Microsoft Sentinel onboards data sources to analyze user and entity behaviors. It performs behavior analytics, identity analytics, user peer analytics and access analytics. And it performs behavior analytics, identity analytics, user peer analytics, user access analytics. And then it detects anomalies and security threats. There is also Active Directory that is Entra ID integration with Sentinel. So this provides user and group information to enhance identity based threat detection. It helps detect privileged account misuse, unauthorized access attempts and lateral movement. This entire integration allows proactive threat detection by identifying deviations from normal behavior. Now let's see how to configure UEBA in Microsoft Sentinel. Let's go to the portal. Let's search for Sentinel. Select Microsoft Sentinel. Select the workspace. Here go to Threat Management. Under Threat Management, there is Entity Behavior. And then you can click on Set UEBA. That is enable UEBA to benefit from a much richer set of entities, profiles, insights into the behavior of your users, hosts and more. So you can click set UEBA or if you don't get this pop up, close this and go to entity behavior settings. And then here it says what is it? That is what is UEBA and then how to enable it. Let's click set UEBA. Here it says turn on the UEBA feature. You must complete step two for UEBA functionalities to start. So this is step one. It's, it also gives you a prompt saying only a global administrator or a security administrator in Microsoft Entra ID can turn this feature on or off. This is the permissions that you need. So I'm going to turn it on. And then it says sync Microsoft Sentinel with at least one of the following directories. This will create profiles for the users and entities in your organizations and also create data stores in Microsoft Sentinel. So I will select Microsoft Entra ID because we don't have an active directory that is the on-premise one. And then I'll hit apply. It's validating. It says entities synced successfully. And then it says select the existing data sources you want to enable for entity behavior analytics. I will say audit logs and then sign in logs as well and then say apply. It says data sources update was successful. And then we are back to the main page here. If I scroll down anomalies is enabled. You need to enable this if it is not already enabled. These anomalies are stored in the anomalies table within your Sentinel workspace. So anomalies table stores detected anomalies for use in detection rules, hunting queries and investigation. This helps security analysts track unusual behaviors over time. It also says that you can tune parameters of machine learning models to improve detection accuracy. Something to note is that it uses 30 days of active data for training. So for UEBA, you need to give some time. It says 30 days for it to start understanding or mapping the normal behavior and understanding how the entities work. And also data is cached and encrypted with Microsoft managed keys. So this needs to be enabled anomalies. Once this is done, let's go back to the Sentinel homepage and then scroll down to configuration in that select analytics. We briefly touched on this in previous chapters, but go to anomalies and then select data sources, Microsoft enter ID and then apply. So only the data sources with Microsoft enter ID are showing up here. The anomalies, the uh, rules. And if you see, it says UEBA anomalous account deletion, password reset, sign in, account manipulation, failed sign in, account cre creation, privilege granted. So these are the rules. Let's select one of these. So it gives you the rule ID. It is enabled and a description of what it does. 
rule frequency and rule status that is rule is enabled so let me close this so if you see all the anomalies rules are enabled if they were not enabled by default you can enable them so if i can select this so there's a button to disable it as well and then if i go to general and logs we can also query the behavior analytics data let me minimize this close this the table is called behavior analytics this is the table that stores user and entity behavior analytics derived from machine learning models in microsoft sentinel so it contains insights into login attempts access patterns and anomalies based on historical data and then we will say where activity type contains failed logon that is it filters the data set to include only failed login attempts so it helps us to focus on unsuccessful access attempts which might indicate a brute force attack or compromise credentials and then we will say where this is another filter activity insights dot first time user connected from country is equal to equal to true that means it checks if the user is logging in from a country for the first time so a first login first time login from a new country may indicate an unauthorized access attempt or a compromised account so that is what we are trying to find next we'll apply another filter where activity insights country uncommonly connected from among peers is equal to equal to true so this checks if the login attempt comes from a country that is uncommon among the users peer group suppose say if most employees from an organization log in from the us and uk but if this user logs in from russia or china it raises a security flag this can indicate geolocation based anomalies and potential account takeover attempts so you see when i try to run this there is a problem and even if i don't run it kql tells me what needs to be done and where there is an error it also gives you a recommendation avoid using the contains operator as it has a high compute price so i'm going to just say type is equal to equal to and then run it i don't have any results but if there is any anomalous behavior in your organization this should fetch results so there is also another table called user peer analytics this stores top 1 to 20 ranked peers so microsoft what microsoft does it calculates and ranks peers based on factors like microsoft entra security group membership mailing list members and departmental roles based on this it creates a list in that top 1 to 20 ranked peers are stored in this peer analytics table and that's it for today guys i hope this video was helpful if so please don't forget to like subscribe and share our videos i will see you soon in another chapter on microsoft sentinel until then bye bye